Hey, hey, welcome back. I was over on Instagram last week asking everyone to do the AMA, ask me anything questions, and instead of answering them over there, I was gonna bring it over to YouTube. And it ranges from personal to business, and I got some really interesting questions. So let's get into it. Favorite board game to play on a game night? So this person knows I love a good game night. So as a kid, it would be Clue hands down, and I had to be Miss Scarlet. Why one? She had to go first. It was in the rules, I always want to go first if I can, and she was just a badass woman. So there we go. But nowadays, I really like strategic games, and my go-to lately always depends on the group that I'm with, to be honest. Ticket to Ride is really fun, also because they have several different versions. Um, you can travel the US, Europe, all the places. Another one is Catan. I also like, oh, what's it called? Stratego. And then if I'm looking for a fun board game, I might go in the way of Imagine If or Quelf, not that other word. Uh, but Imagine If is really fun. We played this a lot when my boyfriend and I were dating in the early, early years. It's a really good way to get to know someone. So look into that if that sounds like up your alley. Question two is, what is my favorite just for fun podcast? You know, a friend recommended this to me on TikTok. Listen to this one, I promise you'll love it. And it's fantastic. It's on Spotify, it's called Every Little Thing. So to summarize it up, if you've ever thought of a question and you're like, I really don't wanna Google that, but I also kinda wanna know the answer, but if I ask a friend, they'll probably think, why are you thinking that? That's this podcast. They answer the questions we have all asked ourselves. Example, why do strangers keep talking to me? Why are cat a-holes? These are legit questions. Y'all, they even answered, where did Netflix's ta dum sound come from? Anything that you've ever wondered in your head while walking or just if it just pops in your head, this podcast is it and I love it because they're like maybe 20 minutes long, which is perfection for me. So check that podcast out on Spotify. Post to being bullied, how did you overcome the fear from that to being on camera? I was always in front of the camera, to be honest. I wanted to be behind the camera when I was younger, but my dad was like, no, you're probably gonna drop the camera. So I went into modeling and I was in stage plays for over 16 years. That was actually my college major until I decided and discovered that at my specific university that they taught graphic design and video editing. I didn't think they did until a friend told me about it. So being in front of the camera was super easy and being behind the camera is even easier. So I don't know if I'd call it a transition. It's just a super, super natural to me. The only thing that's odd about it is not having an audience because when you're in theater, you have the audience. Um, when it goes pitch dark, you really can't see anybody except for like maybe the first five rows. But now it's like you have to have the confidence that when you're talking into camera, when you just see the lens, that it's gonna get out there to someone that it's gonna help. So that's the only thing that I had to overcome, like truly overcome. Uh, so in the beginning, I was really weird. I might pop on my first ever video if I can find it on here that I did when I was in network marketing because it was so awkward. Hey everyone, um, this is my first live video, so bear with me, I'm a little nervous. Um, I got a shipment in today, super excited. Um, let's see what I got. I got four share berries. And I was like, I'm so shy, when I really wasn't, I was just, that's what everybody else was saying. It's just super natural for me. I really, really love it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, next one. Books that have changed your perspective on things. Hands down, Brene Brown's book, The Power of Vulnerability. When Alex first met me, I was not a crier. I didn't have like a lot of emotion. I had the laughing and jokester side of me, but when it came to crying, he thought something was wrong to me. He's like, is that, is that part? Is that a part of you? Like, what's happening? It wasn't until a couple years ago when I read this book that I learned that it's okay to bring the walls down. It's okay to be vulnerable. Um, and it's also when I uh, stopped taking birth control, which is just a weird part of the story also, because 
when I took that out and I also read this book, now I'm like a mess. I cry at every little thing and he knows my triggers too. He will just look over and he's like, yep, you're crying. And I'm like, stop it, stop it. Um, which makes me cry even more. And it's like the silly parts in movies of like when people lose friends and I'm like, oh, I would never want to lose a friend. Um, but yeah, that book has really changed everything. Um, and now I just love all her books, all her TED Talks, etc. She's just a really great person in general. So if you have never checked out any of her things, check her out. What are your long-term goals in your business? Hands down, I want to, I'm going to, we're gonna go that route, talk on stage. I wanna reach so many more people than I can on this platform, on TikTok, on Reels, because not everyone is on here. Not everyone are on those platforms as well. <clears throat> Some people love in-person events, you know? But talking on stages and helping people in video, hands down. I wanna help people become really good at video, on camera, editing, um, whether that means I help them do it and take it off their plates. I'm thinking about doing that right now. Um, yeah, but one of my dreams, and I, it's gonna become a reality, I know it is, is to talk on stage. That's just my goal right now. What's going to happen on the journey to get there is a different story because who knows? It changes all the time, but yeah. Oh man, what's your favorite video you've ever made? This is a toughie, but I'm gonna bring it back all the way to my college days where we had to make a stop motion animation feature that was four minutes long. Think of Nightmare Before Christmas to where we had to take still pictures of, like pictures, pieces of paper moving shot by shot. It took us two weeks to make a four minute video and the last two days I spent sleeping at school. Actually, I spent like 48 hours up total because we were finishing shot by shot rendering and then I was the sound effects person, um, which obviously brings it all together because you need sound. And that was my absolute favorite. I'll insert a little clip here so you can see exactly what it is. Not the whole thing because I don't want to explain the backstory but it was so much fun. Okay, so what you just watched was a 30 second clip out of the four minute film that we made called Frank Dopolis. And that right there took at least a minimum of two days to put together just the clips, just taking pictures of each individual clip, not counting everything else we had to do. So I hope that's a little insight of how fun but um, time consuming things can be. Uh, but let's head back to the video and talk some more. Through that process, I learned if I wasn't doing this, I'll be on my way to California and becoming a Foley artist, hands down. Sound for video, TV, all that stuff is another passion of mine. Hmm, what does your other half do? Okay, so Alex is a super private person, kind of just like the rest of his family. They do not like taking their picture. They do not like being on camera. So I'm gonna respect that. Uh, he's downstairs right now chilling, playing video games. But I will say he does work for Coca-Cola. How many jobs do you have and how do you earn your money? Okay, so I'm not about to say I'm a full-time content creator. I make all my money by helping people, etc. I'm not at all there yet. I actually make about 98% of my money shopping and delivering groceries. I do that about like five or six days a week right now, um, paying off debt. And when I come home, I go to this and go to work. And so I'm working really hard to build up my email list, to produce videos. What is, 
it's like seven o'clock at night and I'm filming this. And then immediately after this, I'm gonna go make a landing page. I'm gonna be editing this, um, do all the things to have this ready to put out by Sunday. I also have like several passive products that I have. I do one-on-one -on -one work and I'm having a couple offers that are coming out now. My goal is to slowly back up from that to where I only do it two days, not two days, man, that'd be awesome. Um, two weeks out of the month and then two weeks on this and then obviously back up more and more to where this is my full time, but I have to get there. Um, obviously people have to know that what I'm doing, I actually know how to do really, really well. Uh, so know, like, and trust, all that stuff. But right now to answer your question, majority of my money comes through grocery shopping. That's not what I wanna do long-term, but there you go. Oh, I like this question. If you could go anywhere in the world, where would it be? Hands down London, hands down. I have always been obsessed with everything England, especially London in particular, kind of weird, but I've always, always wanted to visit. I love all, I shouldn't say all, but so many shows on BBC One, God, another place I'd love to visit is New Zealand, mainly because Alex lived there for six months. Um, so I'd love to see where he lived, meet his friends over there. And he says it's the most gorgeous place on the earth and I'm a huge adventure junkie and apparently they're known for adventure. So that would be super fun. But we both agreed, because he's been to 25 countries, like I haven't been out of America. But we both agreed when we go out of the country together, it's gonna be to London, because that's all I ever talk about. So if I could go anywhere right now in the US, it'd be to California, because that's like my second home. I am obsessed with that state. A lot of people aren't, but I have a lot of friends that live there, and San Francisco is my favorite spot. Last one. If you could be interviewed by anyone, who would it be and why? <laughs> Mentioning London. Um, Hands down, out of anyone in the world that I can think of, Graham Norton. If he is not the best TV host and interviewer, I don't know who is. The thing I love about Graham is not only is he a very fantastic host, but he will bring celebrities and actors, singers, you name it, from all over the world that have never met each other. There's usually about four or five on this awesome curvy red couch and he will bring them together and make them feel like family or like they've known each other for years when a lot of the times they've just met, unless if some of them have been in a movie together. And it's just so fun, the stories he brings out. He doesn't do the silly games like, hey, which is your favorite Kardashian? Or let's chug this. Like, he doesn't do any of that silly stuff. It's interview style. He makes it fun, he has a fantastic personality, and he has the accent that I love listening to. I'm not there to like listen to the accent. It's just, that show is so awesome, I'm gonna put it in the show notes, and I want you to watch it and follow it so you can see what you are missing if you have never watched it. But if I could be interviewed by anyone, it would be him, hands down. That show is amazing, let's just say that. I go on and on. I'm not great at describing stuff, so I will just let you watch it and figure it out for yourself. Thank you for tuning into this video. If you loved it, make sure to ask me questions below that you'd love for me to answer next time, and I'm gonna do another poll of this on Instagram. Also, I mentioned my newsletter. If you want to sign up for the newsletter at all, it's gonna be in the description below. I can't wait for you to tune in next time. See you soon.